Hi guys, welcome back to the DxO Photo Lab series. Today we're going to be talking about geometry. Now geometry is not usually a concern in landscape photography, but it very much is a concern when you start shooting buildings. And the problem is basically this. I'm not as tall as a building, any building, and when I stand on the street and point my camera at a building, the likelihood is that I'm going to crop the top of that photograph off. I won't get the whole building. How am I going to deal with that? I can walk backwards until the building is so far distant that I can see the whole thing in one frame. Or I can get a wide angle lens. Now the problem with a wide angle lens is that you'll get the whole building in frame with no trouble at all, but it will distort worse than your original lens. And it'll add an extra problem which is called volume deformation. And this is where you have circular or oval objects in the corners of the picture that get stretched. And we've all seen this in wide angle photography and often you can use it to creative effect, but in architecture it's not a creative effect, generally it's a menace. So what we're going to look at is the tools that you get in DxO Photolab and the tools that you get in DxO Viewpoint. And the reason I add that is because out of the box, Photolab Elite, you get some of the tools, but to get the whole set of tools, you need to have Viewpoint installed. And I have to say, it's worth it. It's an incredibly good tool. Now, we're going to go through all of the tools that are there in the entire suite. But before we do, quickly, nip down below the video, give us a, a subscribe and a like. I really appreciate these things. And now let's get into it. We're going to take a closer look at the geometry tools in DxO Photo Lab. Um, mostly these can be found in the geometry palette and one of them that i'm including in the aspect of geometry is found in the fx palette and that's the miniature tool um, but let's have a look at them if we look at the top bar here you'll see you've got several you've got the horizon tool force parallel rectangle eight point tool the reshape tool, and skipping across those two, we've got the miniature effect um, on the end. But let's have a quick look down through the geometry palette, just so we um, don't leave anything out. First thing is focal length and focusing distance. Now, these two corrections are used where there is no appropriate um, information in the EXIF file and they will be automatically activated if the software of Photolab thinks there is some doubt about the accuracy of that. And the focusing distance you can set as well. You know, you're most likely to need these um, if you're using some obscure lens. The next one is the horizon tool and this is for straightening horizons. Now if you look at this photo you'll see it's clearly on the um, on the wonk, as they say. If I start my horizon tool, what you're seeing is that automatically it has straightened these to become properly vertical, this one to become properly vertical, the lamp, lamp post to become properly vertical. Note that it, what it hasn't done is chosen the skyline and made that horizontal, because in 99% of cases, that's not going to be the, the right answer. Um, so you can do this, I've done this on auto, but I could do this on the tool if I wanted to select that. So let's have a look and see what the tool would allow me to do. So effectively, you've got handles and you're being asked to set the handle to something that you think should be level in the shot. And the logical one in this shot is actually the steps there. And we're probably pretty close to that because of the auto adjustment, but not 
So that's made a very slight difference. The other way you can do this is just to adjust small differences. Is you can adjust small angles with the horizon slider. Okay, and I'd be probably pretty happy with that. So I'm going to um, now the next item will be logically to crop because you can see that as I've altered the tilt on the picture, I've introduced some dead space around it. So if we go to crop, it will automatically get rid of that dead space. So it's chosen a new crop and that is perfectly satisfactory for that picture. So I'd be happy with that. But if I wanted to make that a manual decision, I'd switch it into manual Okay, so with my crop tool activated, I've got these drag points, corners, uh, middle, corner again, middle again, and so on. And what I'm going to do manually is just pull this one in, if I can get hold of it. There you go. This one needs to come in as well. There you go. And this one, I'm still seeing some black space up there and I can move the entire thing around uh, once I've got the dimensions right but I think that's pretty much it and then I'd hit the enter and there we have a cropped version okay now distortion is something that is brought in when you do the preset so I've mentioned this before I always use the optical corrections preset and that will invoke this distortion um, module. So if we push distortion in, you'll notice that it's done a very small correction. And this is based on the lens that was used. It was the Canon 24-70mm lens at, um, I believe, at 24mm. So some wide angle distortions in there and the software has done its best to um, change that. So moving on to perspective, I would immediately take that off auto. Because what's happened here is that we've already filled in a bunch of the values that we would use for the um, auto. Um, so if this was a clean picture, in fact, if I reset this, turn everything off, I go to perspective, and I hit my tool, and you can see that it's adjusted the picture quite substantially, and what this would require now is an extra crop. So we bring crop in, and there you have tool. So one thing I point out immediately here, and this is a very, very good adjustment of the um, geometrical features of this picture, because there's a lot to confuse the software. Um, we've got converging parallel lines here. Um, we've got steps, slightly different plane here of the door because of the angle that we're shooting at. Um, roof isn't level because of the angle that we're shooting at. So. But it's opted to do the, the corrections that you would opt to do. So it's made this vertical line parallel to this one, to that one, and to this one. And in doing so, it's got to be said, it's lost a great deal of the um, space. So you can see here, um, it's introduced a lot of dead pixels there, which we got rid of in the crop, but this comes at a price of losing some of the areas around the edges and forcing the roof up to the edge of the picture. So lesson number one is when you're shooting architecture, um, you're almost certain if you're just using an ordinary lens and you're doing this handheld, you're almost certain to get distortion. Um, and to get converging or divergent verticals in some shape or form. Leave a lot more space than I left in this picture. This only just fits into the frame. Um, 
and there's nothing terribly interesting going on in the foreground here. Um, so the, the takeaway from this is shooting architecture leave loads of space because these tools eat space. Um, I can demonstrate one of these others at least. So let's have a look at this. We'll undo the auto. Okay, so we'll put this back. Now, this one puts a square on the picture and the nearest thing we've got to a square in this picture that we might want to have sort of facing us head on uh, would be this one here. So you grab your handles. Okay, and what this is going to do is to force these slightly out of parallel uh, into parallel. Okay, and we can close that and now you can see it's actually eaten some more of the picture up because of the, the distortions but what we've done is we've forced an oblique area into a basically a head-on area. I'm not suggesting this is a good thing to do, I'm just suggesting this is a good demonstration of the of the rectangle tool. So let's take that off. And there's a couple of things we might want to do with the eight-point tool. Now what the eight-point tool is really good at um, is parallels in different planes. So if I were to take this building here and this one here. Ideally we'd like these walls to be parallel. Now I'm not so fussed about this and the, the difficulty with this tool is that you might introduce a lot more distortion into the picture than you actually want. So I'm going to leave that one as is because I think that's going to produce a horrendous effect. So let's have a go. Okay. And that's done a pretty good job. So what we're seeing here is it's leveled this um, horizontal line. It's put this at right angles to it in parallel with this one. And there's not much else. I, as I said, if I'd introduced this one, the, this is entirely natural to the, this is how it would look in real life. You're not standing in front of it, so it's going to look on the tilt. This actually looks how it should look. So again, we've done a pretty good job of this, I think. Now the next thing I want to demonstrate is the volume deformation tool and for that we're going to go to a different um, photograph. Okay, so here we've got a different photograph from the same session and this was done again with a wide angle lens and what we're seeing here is deformation at the edges of the frame and this is very typical of wide angle lenses so this is actually a circular um, fountain the the fountain thing <laughs> is dead center um, right in the middle and what's happened with the wide angle is it's exaggerated the size of this bit because we were standing literally three tiles away from it and it is right there in the corner of the frame so let's have a look and see what um, can be done to correct this. Volume deformation is down here. We're back in the geometry module. Turn on the volume definition and hey presto. It's completely corrected this again at the expense of cropping into your photograph. Um, and in this case, it's kind of overcorrected on here because this is uh, it's got this bit right and this bit wrong. If we turn it off, you can see that that tower is in fact more or less parallel. So, very helpful for here. This would have been next to impossible to do with the with the tools. Um, 
And what we could do here is to use the reshape tool just to drag that um, tower over. Now what the reshape, the, the reshape tool does is allow us to drag the picture around. Really we want a couple more target points. So here we've got one. Okay, and we can pull that into parallel. Pull that into parallel. And this one we need to drag that spire up parallel. We just need to pull that spire over into the vertical and that is much much better. This one there. Okay. Close the tool. But to recap with the tool, you've got a range of grid sizes here. Um, rather along this line here. And you can fine tune um, your photograph in small aspect. This is a very powerful tool um, and you have to use it carefully um, and as I have done it's quite good to use this in tandem with the deformation tool volume you know to get rid of the volume aberrations with um, wide-angle lenses because that will do in one click uh, what it would take you half an hour to do in the reshape tool. Finally we want to visit the FX column. Okay, we're going to do this last tool with our old friend Refugio Veronica in the Picos de Europa. Um, and what we're going to do is to demonstrate the miniature effect. So the miniature effect is found in the FX palette. We turn it on here and we want to, you can see it's already applied a little bit, but what we want to do is to maximize the impression of these people being miniature and like toys or models, I guess. So turn the tool on and what you can do is you can alter the plane of the tool and you can make the band of clear focus um, as narrow as you like. Um, and your blur level, really, you do this to taste. I think something round about there would be appropriate. Um, symmetric position is if I unclick that, I can change this um, asymmetrically. asymmetrically. Is that a word? Um, but I'll keep that in symmetrical position. Bring that, just take it above the thing. Apply my blur with the tool. Turn the blur levels up. Close that off. Slightly better. So this is um, something that belongs to um, Viewpoint and you will need to have Viewpoint installed on your system for this to surface in Photolab. Um, it's quite a popular effect. It's probably better, to be honest, used with cars and such like. Uh, um, but this, this does show you what the tool can do. Yeah, so um, that's it for this week. Um, we'll hopefully see you next Tuesday with a brand new video. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and do please subscribe or like. would be absolutely superb. Thanks very much, guys. Bye.